Welcome back to Practical 365. I'm Steve Goodman, and this is part two on how we can deploy IoT with Microsoft Teams and the Power Platform. In part one, we discussed the why. Why would we do this? And now in this video, we're going to think about the how. What type of devices can we pick? How do we get started with those? And how do we get the data in? What are our options? We're going to keep it as simple as possible because we could talk for hours about all the different ways of doing things. But it does come down to three broad sets of device options. Now, the first of that is if we're thinking about what you'd call the, the best solution, where it is going to be something that if you pick that as a technology to start with, it is going to scale to connecting into manufacturing systems, industrial systems, even robotic systems, where there's gateways that you can buy that are certified with Azure that can plug into existing Modbus, Ethercat, and other protocols that have been around for a very, very long time. So some of these, 40 years, those systems are very, very well developed. Now, within that, there's also the devices that are either acting as the gateway or they are acting as the sensor itself, or, and they connect over a wireless network to send that data securely into Azure. Now, the second category of those devices are usually running something such as Azure Real-Time Operating System. So that is the standard from Microsoft for the easiest to deploy type of devices that will be developed and available off the shelf to work in your environment. Those will have the correct security chips. They will also work with Microsoft's model for bringing the devices in, the most native model, because what we don't want to do is something like build, this is the, the right-hand side of these options, build a open source complete solution where we've got a Raspberry Pi with sensors connected to the GPIO pins that has a username and password stored on the device and somebody could steal it and access our tenant or something similar like that. We need to have security at the heart of all this whenever we're thinking about it. Now, in that first category uh, where we're thinking about those gateway devices, we do have Azure Sphere, which is another solution from Microsoft, which actually, you know, if you're looking at commercial devices that are perhaps building in a Raspberry Pi compute module into what will be a very industrial device where the manufacturer of it has built the whole circuit board that that attaches to and has licensed all of those protocols then as your sphere is going to provide a linux based operating system that then can have real-time operating system type code deployed to it securely and effectively is containerizing different workloads or things that run and what it does but those do fit into that gateway device category the rtos that's the area where we'll have a look at in the next videos because it's easy to get started with and the knowledge you gain there you can use if you're looking at the other options because in the middle we've got what is somewhere in the what you might call the prosumer brand or market where it might be the same hardware that you might find in everything from your smart thermostat at home to even led strips in some cases but all the way up to commercial devices that can run the Azure code. It can run the open real-time operating system, which is a platform that is deployed to these microcontroller units. Very small devices, very cheap, can be deployed uh, very easily. If you lose them, it doesn't matter, but they run the code in that real-time operating system. And it is something that's supported by AWS and others, and there's an Azure SDK for that that allows us to interface directly with the right services in a secure manner. And although they might run the same chips as some of those cheaper devices, then they're either certified to work with Azure or they also have the special security chips on them because the different models of chipsets from these vendors, some will be designed really for industrial IoT rather than cheap units that you buy uh, off Amazon or, or something like that. And they're good, especially for lower risk environments, because if it might be the difference between $100 or $50 for a device and you've got to deploy a thousand of those, then that might be where on the hardware side, the cost model will or won't make sense. But the good thing is there is that open model, the cheaper device model where manufacturers are certifying 
what might be commodity hardware, but they're deploying that with that open RTOS, with the Azure SDKs. They've developed a solution that fits on top of those. Now, on the other side, you've got open standards and open gateways that have much lower cost, and they don't even need Azure sitting in the middle to do that. And they're, they're good, especially for proof of concepts um, or very, very low risk environments. But you must be careful when you do that, because when we look at our options on things like gateways, then we really want to try and stick as close as we can to something that's going to be easy to manage and support. So gateways are the way that we take the data, uh, much like an SMTP server in a way, where we take that data that the signals are being sent to some sort of a hub, and that might have a hub and then a, an onward bridge to somewhere else before it gets into Azure in some cases. It may have direct network connectivity from your sites over the WAN into Azure to get that in in a secure path. But the first option that you might want to look at, especially if you're looking to quickly deploy and prove the concept, is an application as a service platform. So the APAAS, the Application Platform as a Service for Microsoft for IoT, is IoT Central. And that combines lots of things that make up Microsoft's IoT solution into something that's similar to a SaaS solution, but it is that combination of a platform. It could be the Windows 365 to Azure Virtual Desktop, as a comparison, if you know those. Now, IoT Central brings together things that we need. And in that middle option, then we have some core stuff that is going to be essential. So we want to be able to manage the devices. And we have our equivalent, effectively, to Intune, the device provisioning service which allows us to have those registered devices and manage those, see them, have visibility into them. And then we have the place where the data comes in and then is pushed onward, and that's the IoT hub. And we can build our solution ourselves, and that's more like you know our construction site where we're, we're building everything together, but it's done in an orderly way. The other side to that is where we might want to run some of these services. Perhaps we want to run the gateway on open technologies, perhaps supported and that might use a technology like MQTT, where that is standard all the way down to home automation, where that might be the protocol that's used to trigger things that happen uh, or the signals that go, go to and from your Alexa. But those also have applications in industrial IoT. And there's commercial solutions like Hive, MQ, open solutions from various vendors that allow us to send that to that message queue, that bus that sends it forward. Or we can use open source technologies and deploy them in, as containers in Azure. And then we can build our own middleware that subscribes to those messages. And then perhaps that runs as a service that we run in Azure that then pushes it on. But do we want to do that? That will be the big question because when it comes down to cost, then there's also the reliability, the maintainability of it. And if you are very much in the open source world or you've got a team that is, then you might be looking towards that right hand side. If you want to deploy this as swiftly as possible, then you want to go to the left hand side and you want to go for something that's pre packaged. You open it up and then you start going. And that's what we're going to have a look at how to use in the next video.